Okay, hello class. So, leaving off where we, uh, starting from where we left off the last lesson, uh, what are the species present here in this setup? What can be oxidized or reduced? Which electrode will it occur at? So, let's think. Huh, okay, oxidize, reduce. We have a few uh, species here. We have copper solid. We have... Uh, Cu2 plus, we have, ooh, we have sulfate, and because it's an equal solution, I also of course have your H plus as well as your OH minus. Okay, so now is the question to ask. Which are the species that will get oxidized and which will be reduced? Okay, so let's think about it. Copper metal can lose electron to become copper 2 plus, right? Can it gain electron to become copper minus? No, it cannot. So if copper can only lose electron to become copper 2 plus, lose electron is oxidation. Okay. We can also have um, your anions oxidized to become their respective gases. Correct? Okay, so this is uh, just a recall. Oh, what's wrong with this thing? Oh, always disappear. Okay, anyway, oxidize copper metal. Okay, then uh, sulfate. Then I have hydroxide. Okay, sorry, there's a construction going on. I don't know what's going on on the other side of the staff room. But anyway, then what is reduced will be the other cations. Cu2 plus, because cat, um, reduction is to gain electron, right? Only your cation can gain any more electrons. Cu2 plus, H plus. Okay, so from here, how can I decide? which is oxidized and which is reduced. Remember I say that the third rule about type of electrode is a reactive electrode. That is the, definitely the one that is oxidized because it's easier to get electrons out directly from the metal instead of waiting for the anions to hit the electrode to give it the electrons. Okay, so copper is the one that will be uh, losing electrons. And then what is reduced? You can see that your Cu2 plus is below your hydrogen in the electrochemical series. So Cu2 plus will be preferentially uh, reduced. Okay, so this is a um, two half equation. Okay, and this is what will happen. Okay, I'll show you the animation. At first it's this long, uh, then it becomes like this. So copper here supplies your Cu2 plus ions. And your Cu2 plus ions will become your copper metal on the other side. So you may ask yourself, oh, what's the point of this? Okay, I mean overall there's no equation, right? So even though overall there's no um no overall equation, it does not mean that there's there was no reaction. Okay, what happened is actually this is used industrially in the purification of copper. So we put the impure copper here and uh, what we want is for this end to have the pure copper. Okay, so uh, using electrolysis, the impure copper okay, will be electrolyzed. So the metal cations will go into solution and your copper 2 plus ions will be the one that is deposited on the right hand side, okay, on your negative electrode. So, this ensures that everything here is pure copper. Okay, so here's a summary of our last lesson. Okay, there are two types of things that can be oxidized. Your anions can lose electrons to become a gas. Usually, like, usually. Okay, usually they are gases. Like your chlorine gas, iodine gas, uh, what other gas? Chlorine gas, iodine gas. Bromine gas, okay. Your iodine can be a solid also, okay. So, uh, depends, uh, okay. Iodine is the one that's uh, being 
oxidize, then iodine can have a black precipitate form. Okay, you can also see purple vapor. Okay, the reactive metal electrodes. Uh, okay, so this is the one that will take priority. Okay, so if you have a reactive metal electrode, this is the one that will take priority over the anions. Okay, reason being it's easier for the metal electrodes to directly supply the electrons uh, themselves if they are the ones who are reactive. Okay, anions lose electron to become a gas. So reactive metal electrode lose electron to become cations. Okay, I forgot to close the bracket. Okay, so what can be reduced then is only your cations. Okay, so take note, even if you have a reactive metal electrode on the negative terminal, it cannot uh, be reduced also. Because for a metal, uh, uh, oxidation state 0 is like the maximum they can go. Okay, the lowest they can go. So let's have some application of electrolysis. Yay! So first is the electroplating. What is electroplating? It is the use of electrolytic cell, what we've been learning so far, to coat a conductive material, the okay, conductive, that means conductive to metal, can conduct electricity, okay, uh, not electrons, can conduct electricity, but I know space to write, but you know what I mean, right, okay, so conduct uh, conductive material with a thin layer of desired uh, metal, so it's a thin layer, notice that here it's very dull, Okay, Dow Trophy. We electroplate it with silver. Wow, totally glam. Okay, so that's the whole point of electro, yeah, electroplating. Okay, so now, can you think, if you want to plate a metal key with silver, what are the materials that you will need? Draw a suitable setup. Okay, so I'll ask you, what will be a suitable electrolyte as well as what will be a suitable electrode? At which terminal should you connect your key to? The positive or the negative terminal? Okay, write down the half equations that are involved in this setup. Okay, try yourself now, okay, and I will have a pop-up question. Ding. Okay, so after the, the questioning, let's go through the answers. Okay, now the electrolyte that I chose here is silver nitrate. Uh, but you can also have silver sulfate solution. Okay, why do I use this type of uh, these two uh, anion? Okay, it's because these are quite high up in the electrochemical series, first of all, so they will definitely not be discharged metal. Work. I don't want to have any complicated reaction. Okay, I just it's in EE. I just want the oxidation to be your know, silver. Here becomes silver plus, and ECE. I just want the AG plus here to become metal here. Okay, so I don't want to have the possibility of any other anion complicating my reaction. So I just choose those very high up in the electrochemical series that will definitely never, ever, ever be discharged. Okay, so why silver nitrate? Okay, because I want to plate silver onto the key. So this is similar to your copper example. Okay, just now, remember the copper example, we have a copper moving from the positive electrode here to your negative electrode. Okay, so what happens here is that your, um, your silver plus in the solution will become your silver uh, coating on your key in the negative terminal. So this is at the negative terminal, this is at the positive terminal. Okay, so if this is the reduction, this is also your cathode, and this is your anode. Okay, so think of that, your cathode is always the place where you want to put the thing you want to plate. Okay. So again, uh, and the negative terminal is where you want to put the thing you want to plate. Just think of it as you want the metal cation to go there and become the metal, right? So what, which electrode will attract metal cations? 
must be the negative terminal. Okay, so that's how you remember. So here, why is it that I use silver as the other electrode? Okay, because after a while, your silver solution may start to run out of your silver ions. Your having silver as the other electrode will replenish your the concentration of silver ions in the solution. Okay, so this ensures that the solution does not change, the concentration does not change, so you do not replenish it with silver, and it's not like you halfway run out of silver to plate, and then suddenly uh, you will see uh, hydroxide. Uh, uh, suddenly you will see uh, hydrogen gas start to evolve, because since there's no more silver plus, right, then the hydrogen ions will start to be evolved. Okay. So, what if you want to have a layer of gold on plants like orchids? What do you think will be the challenge? Okay, so actually the challenge is that plants are not very conducive, uh, not, not very conductive. Okay, to be a conductor, you must have some kind of electrolyte in you, or you must have some uh, metal, some delocalized electron somewhere. Okay, so that's why plants are not very conductive. So here's a video for you. Oh, it's a video section. Okay, you are watching a video, playing a video to you. Okay, let's just watch this video. Is there sound? Oh no, I think there may be no sound for this because they are using my microphone. Okay, uh, uh it's just a calming music. Okay, that this ama is uh gently, lovingly, uh Finding some orchids. Okay. Then you know hand pluck. Wow. Oh, you see, they put some cotton bud so that the orchids will not die so fast. And then they send it to the factory. Okay, send to factory. Then they need to check the orchid. This orchid chill not. The petals nice not. Okay. You must have very nice petals. Okay, then they wound it out with some wire. Then they dip it into ah this one I don't know what's this solution okay trade secret they did not write it in their website color color paint paint I don't know what they are painting with okay supposedly they told uh they say that it's some kind of copper coating but I'm also not sure exactly what it is okay so that's the secret that they are also not willing to tell other people because that's what makes their money okay so they are you know I don't know what they are doing now Okay, so they plated it with copper somehow. Okay, att attaching the other stuff. And now, now, you see here, it is electroplating it with gold. Ah, and this is what you see in the market. Golden orchids. Okay, called, called uh, Reese's orchid. If you are interested, you can ask your mom or dad to buy you one. Okay, Consider, considering that it's gold plated, I think I don't think it's like super expensive. Okay, it's like if you get a earring, it's like sixty dollars. Okay, not bad. Huh? Okay, so you may ask me what's the point of this? The point is that you get to have nice looking jewelry. Uh, and in Singapore, you see, Singapore loves orchid. Okay, so what do you think is happening at the anode and cathode? Okay, this is the Extraction of aluminium. We learned before that for reactive metal, okay, we tend to use the electrolysis method to obtain the pure metal from their ores. Okay, so um, this reactive metal, you actually need to obtain the pure metal from their ores. So let's look at this diagram, okay? Here, bauxite here, refers to mainly your aluminium oxide, okay? Creolite here is an aluminium compound with a lower melting point than uh, Al2O3, okay? Now, your positive uh, electrode is here, your negative electrode is here. Okay, so let's think about what are the species that are present. Okay, we have your 
uh, carbon electrodes on both sides. Then we have molten uh, aluminium oxide, which is Al3 plus liquid state, O2 minus liquid state. Okay, so of this, this species here, which will be oxidized and which will be reduced? Okay, aluminum here will be come aluminum metal, right? In doing so, it must gain electron. So, if it gains electron, it is the reduction. Gain electron is reduction. And it is at the negative electron where it can gain electron. That's why you see that molten aluminum is at the bottom where it's touching the touching the uh negative electrode, which is also the cathode. Okay, so for oxygen, it gains electron to become a uh, there. It loses electron to become oxygen gas. Okay, so this is an oxidation process. You can see that there's a vented cover for your oxygen gas to escape. Okay, so at the your anodes, you should be able to see oxygen gas coming up. Now we'll move on to a simple cell.